Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and these are the best helmets for oval heads. Those with narrow heads and narrow minds will run to awry. See, Japan's A-Team is the cliche choice when it comes to shaped helmets. That's why my round helmet video also starts with an awry, the Quantum X, which happens to be identical to their oval offering, the Signet X, in every way except for head shape. So forgive me because I am about to plagiarize my own video. The Signet X's padding has five millimeters of peel away foam, so you can customize it and make this egg even more oval if need be. The crown is adjustable too, which is an extremely rare level of customization. But of course Arai provides that. Their bread and butter is wealthy motorcyclists with weird heads, so why not? Touching on the wealthy part, this Signet X is $800 in boring colorways, and $1,000 in graphics, because $200 is pocket change to Arai buyers, because paint is more expensive in Japan, because Arai has no shame. Choose whichever excuse you like. The shell is PBSCLC for peripherally belted, super complex laminate construction. Any name that includes the words super complex is obviously designed to impress, not describe. So let's keep it real, Arai, and just say this is a fiberglass shell with an extra strong belt wrapped around the top of the eye port. And that allows me to have less EPS foam here, allowing for a thinner shell, allowing for a higher field of vision in that full tuck position. Ventilation is good and bad. The good is that the vents close with these flaps that maintain aerodynamics and therefore quietness. Also good are the visor ducts, which actually run cool air back to the blood flow at your temples. The bad is that you have absolutely no hope of finding these vent controls with your gloves on. Speaking of bad, this chin curtain makes the helmet way too stuffy, so rip it out and put it someplace where you're never going to find it again because you'll much prefer actually being able to see the emergency pad release tabs. Plus, I still have this retractable curtain if I want to yank it out for a chilly ride. All right? This thing was pointless. In a similar vein, the new shield latch is also unnecessary. Push it down, push it up. Either way, you need to get in there with your finger to properly unlock the visor. This is so badly designed that I'm not even sure how it was supposed to work. But the Signet X is still the most comfortable helmet for oval heads. It's also one of the safest with five different EPS densities and one of the lightest at 1,605 grams. Your Signet enjoys long rides to the ocean, daily outings, and the occasional spirited romp. You could also coax it to the track with its Snell sticker, but it's probably better to leave that job to the mistress. And here she is, the Scorpion EXO R2000, $450 of naughty fun. There are fast helmets, and then there are fast helmets. This is the latter, as evidenced by the enormous reflector on the bottom of the neck roll. Only way this is visible is if you're going full missile mode. The EXO R2000 was developed by nobody's favorite MotoGP rider, Alvaro Bautista. So maybe it doesn't come with a note from the doctor or a dead seagull for Maniac Joe, but it's still a bona fide MotoGP helmet, and that's cool. Even cooler is that it comes with a regular visor and a badass visor. Now there are websites that will tell you this is an intermediate head shape, don't listen to them. I have an intermediate head, and the EXO R2000 is definitely tight on the sides and roomy front to back. Plus, with the air fit system, I can pump up the cheek pads to sit even narrower. I don't care what anyone says. This thing is as oval as Trump's office. Of course, the R2000 is Snell rated with emergency release cheek pads. It does suck that the paramedic instructions are written on the chin curtain, as I would probably remove that for hotter track days. But I do enjoy the fun font. It seems to say, howdy doody, sir. Please don't break my neck. Ventilation is powerful. I can actually feel the little torrents of wind hitting against my skin. Also, because the cowls close at the openings, I don't trap any whistling vortices of air in here. It's much quieter that way. However, good luck finding the tiny vent toggles with your gloves on. And this is the kind of helmet you set up in the pits before you ride, not during. Stats! The shell is TCT, a blend of fiberglass aramids and organic fibers. Must be decently strong, as it's good enough to slim this helmet down to 1,645 grams. It's also very heavily molded. This is one of few helmets that looks better from the back than from the front, in my opinion. Now, what if I like the laid-back, everyday comfort of the Signet X, but I prefer the value of the Scorpion? Well, here's their illegitimate love child. It's the Icon Alliance GT. The bastard actually outdoes its parents, having a comfier liner than Papa Arai and a smaller price tag than Mama Scorpion. Under $300, eh? I think the Icon's oval fit is as comprehensive as the Signet's too. Only difference is the Arai is way more adjustable, whereas this is more of a one-size-might-fit-all standard oval. Keeping with the theme of everyday functionality, we have a gilded sun visor. Bling bling. 
A ventilation and quietness are both fine, nothing interesting to say there, but the shield does annoy me. It opens and closes with a peg and a hole, which is a bit inelegant and takes a lot of strength to open. At least it does work though. Awry. Only thing left to say is that the shell is polycarbonate and it weighs 1,675 grams. Also, there's no speaker cutouts in here, so if you have a passion for music, lose it. Modular option. This is the LS2 FF325, or if you prefer your helmets not to be named after fax machines, the Strobe. Of all the modulars I've tested in 2017, this is perhaps the most impressive. Shield mechanism. Tight, slick, quick releasing. Chin bar mechanism. Easy to find, smooth, Herculean top detent. Sun shield, properly low. Neck roll, reflective, ratchet strap, really comprehensive seal. That last bit makes the strobe quiet, which is rare for cheap modulars. Even rarer is the featherweight 1,630 grams. I have no idea how LS2 managed to put out a thermoplastic sun visored modular within that weight class. And all this for a humble 200 bucks, whereas comparable helmets charge north of five. But every cheap rose has its thorns. The tight neck roll makes the strobe hard to put on, thorn. And then the pinlock ready face shield doesn't come with an anti-fog pinlock lens, thorn. And ventilation is stuffy with absolutely no exhaust ports whatsoever, so fogging is frequently an issue. Double four. Then the safety ratings are excellent everywhere except the left side, where it sucks so bad that the whole helmet lost two stars from Sharp. Plus LS2 is really good at writing glasses on the inside of their helmets, but not actually very good at all at carving eyeglass channels. Now I know that sounds like a lot of flaws, but some core stuff, the smooth flip up, the big sun visor, the quiet padding, the lightweight, are amazing. I don't think I've ever seen those things done this well for $200. And yes, the strobe is a long oval head shape. I haven't forgot the point of our video just yet. Now, if I'm an oval headed adventurer, the options are few. Foremost, we have the LS2 MX436 Pioneer and the Icon variant. The variant is a solid helmet, comfy, refined, and very aerodynamic, but it's not much of an adventurer since it's quite stuffy around the trails and absolutely hates playing with goggles. I say a lot more about this bucket in the review linked below, but for now, let me just say, no. That leaves the LS2 Pioneer, which is very strange. The shell is KPA, a pretty chunky blend of polycarbonate and thermoplastic. Plus there's a sun visor in here, a pretty good one, and a peak, so I'd expect the whole thing to weigh as much as a small cow, and yet it comes in at only 1,520 grams. How do they do that? Probably the same way they can sell it for 170 bucks. Mass production magic. Visually, I see the profile of an MX helmet. I also see a bright orange interior, also reminiscent of a motocrosser's immature sense of fun. I see eyeglass badges, but with LS2 we all know that doesn't really mean shit. I also see vents on the flanks of the chin bar, very Batman. I see a hideously tacky main vent that looks like it was made by Fisher Price, not very Batman. And I see emergency pad releases, which are still rare on ADV lids for unfathomable reasons. Functionally, the shield takes the strength of a Greek god to open, and then it only stops moving once it hits the sun peak, which is a bit crude. Also, the optical distortion from this bottom ridge is noticeable. At least you can fit goggles in here though. Moving upwards, the forehead vents are permanently open to the rain. And then the peak adjusters are thumb screws on the top and regular screws on the sides, just because it's more annoying that way. Fitment wise, this helmet is long and low. It's definitely a narrow oval head shape and definitely not that tall. And the pressure point right on the top of my head reminds me of the AGV AX8 in that sense. Not a good choice for cone heads. Also, I'm pretty sure the LS2 Sun Peak has never seen the inside of a wind tunnel. Very briefly, choose the LS2 Bobber if you want an oval open face. It's a fiberglass helmet, which sounds impressive for $150, but the thing still weighs a very average 1,100 grams. It is slim though, and nicely made. Apparently the trim is real leather and the liner is synthetic suede. I can't really tell where one ends and the other begins. I guess that's a good thing. Also, the snap-on Sun Peak is removable and adjustable. The bobber comes with these vintage goggles, which is kind of like getting a toy in your Happy Meal. Yes, they feel cheap and sucky, but who's going to complain about a free toy? And that's all, folks. Thanks for watching.